Hey y'all, listen, it is another episode of Cooking with Cocktails. If you are in the mood for a good salad, stay tuned because that's what I'm about to make. It is get high school skinny season, okay? Not really, but you know what I'm trying to say. So if you're in for a good salad, something that's quick that you can have for dinner, for lunch, whatever, stay tuned. <laughs> Cause you know it's high school skinny. We you know building the summer bodies. I think I'm kind of late for the building the summer body situate focus. Okay, we're making a salad. It is a take on the steak um, the steak gorgonzola salad. We're gonna do a fish gorgonzola salad. So it's gonna be a nice salad. You can have it for lunch. You can have it for dinner. It's one of those things that you can build and have later. You can put it in a jar. You know how people do the salads in a jar. You could do that and then save your meat. If you choose to have one, save that and put that on as you get ready to dress your salad. We're gonna make our dressing. Our cocktail is a clementine. T-H-Y-M-E. Get it? Clementine. Never mind. We're using mandar woo, mandarins because couldn't find any clementines. So it's gonna be one uh, one mandarin, the juice of half lemon, um, half ounce of simple syrup. It calls for two ounces of gin, I'm only doing one. And what else, I'm missing something. I said the simple syrup, I said it. Oh, and you're gonna top it with club soda. Then the mocktail is gonna be another clementine, mandarin, the juice of the rest of this lemon, half ounce of simple syrup and we're going to top it we're going to pour in the club soda so the mocktail is exactly like the cocktail minus the gin so that's going to make it super easy oh forgot we have rinsed all of our our things off here so in here we have our thyme so we're going to use some fresh thyme that's the thyme part of the cocktail and then in here we have our corn that's going to go on the salad we have some green onions in here. We have some basil. We have some parsley. We have our tomatoes. We have our cucumbers. All of this is going to be used for the fish and the um, salad. So those are the ingredients. So what do we need all of this for? Let's get that out of the way and then we're going to get to getting everything together. So the gremolata is going to be like your sauce. That's going to be what you're going to use. You, it's really good with steak, but I'm using fish because y'all know I don't eat steak. So this is what you need. You're going to take, um, for your gremolata, you're going to take some basil leaves, which are in this bucket. Let me go ahead and grab everything out that I need for the gremolata. All right. I just like to say gremolata because you're going to need some fresh parsley. Let's move this, the time over here. You'll need fresh parsley. You're gonna also need your, um, it doesn't call for green onions, but I like green onions in mine. You also need some basil leaves. So we got our fresh basil leaves. I wish I had a remote that could zoom my camera in, my lens in more, but we are not there yet. So this is lettuce that I need for the salad. Um, what else we got in here? That's the basil. Then the rest of this is for the salad. So in here is just tomatoes and uh, tomatoes, the salad mix. And this I'm using the spring mix and our cucumber. The corn is going to be shaved on top of the salad as well. So your gremolata is going to be some fresh garlic, parsley, basil, green onion, if you so choose. Okay? And lemon zest. That's going to be what you season your fish with. Of course, you can use your other seasonings, which I'm also going to use. I'm just going to put a little bit of onion and garlic powder. Powder. What? A little bit of onion powder, garlic powder, and some cracked black pepper. That's all I'm going to do to the fish because all of this is going to add a lot of flavor to the fish. Then for the dressing, we're going to make it ourselves. We're going to have a balsamic vinaigrette. We're going to use some EVOO, some balsamic vinegar some Dijon mustard, Dijon, Dijon, some of this, and some salt and pepper. That's the dressing. So this is going to be for the fish seasoning. And then we're going to mix, we're going to make our little mixture in here. Um, I need another bowl because I need a bowl for the, the salad dressing. I'm going to make, we're going to make the cocktail last because um, it's not going to take long. So what we're going to do now is make our gremolata. So let's get our bowl here and let's get to cutting. So for your, and I'm going to probably cut up too much parsley, but um, what I don't need for the 
the gremolata. I'm just going to put it on my salad because fresh parsley is really good for you. It tastes good. Oh, it smells so good. I wish I, I, wish I had smell-o-vision or smell-o-phone. Never mind. So you're going to need two tablespoons of chopped parsley. And this is going to be about it. All right. And I'm going to just build my gremolata as I go. And whatever is too much, I'm going to put it in the bowl with the salad. So that's going to be one. And that's going to be our two tablespoons of chopped parsley. All right, battery died. We're back. So I already have the two tablespoons of uh, fresh parsley. And so I'm just going to finish cutting the rest of this up because I'm just going to mix it into my salad. And you know what? We're going to go ahead and cut up everything for the salad. And then we're going to rinse our cutting board. And we're going to get to our drink. Making our drink. Alright. So we have our parsley cut up for our, our what is it called? Let's say it together. Grimolata. Alright. Then you're going to need allergies, man. Woo. You're going to need the same amount. I don't like the way that basil leaf looks. Let's put that over there. You'll need two tablespoons of, I don't even know if I took out enough basil. You'll need two tablespoons of basil leaves. I don't think I took out enough. So whatever I took out is going to be what it's going to be. This might be one tablespoon for real. Yeah, let's see. And it's supposed to be minced anyway. I don't know, we might be good. Let's see. Let's see. So that's one tablespoon. Oh no, y'all. We might be cooking with well, we're not cooking. Oh. We might be good with the basil that we chopped up. Or oh. yeah, we chopped it because we did not mince it. Okay, we are good. Yep. Look at that. I don't know if y'all can see it. I ain't trying to drop the basil on the counter. But there's our basil. Let's get that off with a knife. Get it all off. All right, and then we're going to cut our onion up. And y'all know, I think I told y'all before, I never keep the tops of onion. I always like the tops off. I don't know if y'all can see. But I think I was saying, I don't know if I finished my thought, but I was like, man, I wish I had a remote that could zoom my camera in, my, my thing closer. But I think I might just need to get another lens. One that I can, because this is a wide angle lens, I might just need to take that off. And see if I can zoom in better with with um, just having the regular camera camera lens instead of the extra wide angle lens. Let's see. All right, we're gonna add that to the bowl. And again, the green onion is totally um, optional. All of it is really optional. All right. Uh, and then we need a clove of garlic. So we're going to get this all nice and cut up. Now this, y'all know I'm trying to cut this garlic as small as possible because y'all know I'm not a huge garlic girl. I'll eat it, but I don't want it. I don't want it too, too big. And I would take out my little stove top, I mean my countertop burners, but I don't really feel like cleaning up after that. So this is just easier. So we're going the easy route. So you got a clove of garlic diced or minced, whichever you are able to do. And you can use everything. You can actually buy all this stuff already cut up in the store in jars and stuff in the produce section. So in here we have two tablespoons of basil leaves, two tablespoons of fresh parsley, one garlic clove, and two um, pieces, two, what do you call it, of green onion? Stalks? No. Girl, it's two green onion things in here. Just... There it is. All right. The next thing we're going to do is add our lemon zest. Ba -ba -ba -ba. And it's good that we're making this cocktail because none of the lemon will go to waste. None of it is going to waste because we're zesting it. 
we're juicing it and then we're gonna put the rest of it in the whatever you know is left after juicing it either in the garbage or the garbage disposal one of the two i feel like that needs a little bit more lemon zest now the grimolata recipe does not call for oil but because i'm using fish and not steak i am going to add just a little bit because you want it to be able to coat your fish and when you make this typically you just put it on your meat and put, you could also add mint to it um you're just going to put it on your meat and put it in a bag and let it sit for 30 minutes i'm gonna add a little bit of salt a little bit of pepper then we're going to mix it up and I'll show you on camera oh gosh it smells so fresh it smells so good it's just all these greens look at that all the greens look so good now let's um season our fish we're going to go with some pepper We're gonna go with a little bit of salt. And our best friends, onion powder and garlic powder. Now let's flip the fish. Do the other side. Where's my dishcloth? And season this side and then after this we're gonna put it in the pan we're, well, we're gonna put the topping on it put it in the pan and I'm not gonna add pepper to I mean salt to this other side simply because we don't need to need this to be salty but pepper is fine then we're gonna take our topping and I'm gonna bring this up closer so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing is I'm essentially bathing the fish in the gremolata So we are just going to, no, I do not have gloves, but if you're texture weird, you'll want gloves. You're just going to like massage the fish or whatever meat you choose. You're going to massage it with the gremolata. That way it coats everything. You got that lemon zest on there. You got the pepper, the salt. You got your oil, your garlic. And because it's fish, it's going to cook super fast. So I'm going to let this sit just for a couple of minutes. Did I plug my, I thought I plugged my laptop up. Looks like my battery is dying. All right, just let this sit for a minute, but I'm going to get my pan out and put this on to put the, um, turn it on with, get some heat to it. And so this can cook. All right, so we're back. Let's go ahead and make our vinaigrette. We're going to go in with about three tablespoons of balsamic vinaigrette. Now the re actual recipe for this dressing calls for like, I think it's a half a cup of um, oil. Is it a half a cup of oil? Yeah, it is. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna save the oil for last. We're gonna do a half teaspoon of our Dijon mustard. That's actually a little more than a half, which is fine. All right, and then we're gonna go in with um, about a half a cup of oil. Salt and pepper. Who's calling me? Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Had to take a phone call. So look, look at my fancy bowl. Isn't that fancy? And look, the top is even fancier. Oh, I done lost my corn. Hold on. Look at my fancy top. Don't be jealous. You too, and you too can have a fancy container for your salad. 
All right, so here's our dressing. Here's our dressing. Three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, um, half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, some salt and pepper. Also, it calls for a half teaspoon of Dijon mustard, but I added about a good teaspoon and a half. So let me put the fish in because our pan is ready. Okay, I'm not gonna be um, lazy. I'm actually gonna put the salad on a plate so that y'all can see what it looks like when I take the fish out. Always taste the things that you're doing to see if what you need to add. We're gonna put a little piece on a little piece of lettuce. It needs more pepper. The fish is cooking nicely. I think I had, yep. I had a piece of parsley on my fingernail. All right, so our dressing is ready. Let's stick that over to the side. Now let's cut up our onion. Because as soon as that fish is ready, the salad is going to be good to go. And you don't need a lot of onion. I mean, you can put as much onion as you want. I'm only doing, this is how much onion I'm using. That's all I'm gonna do to the onion. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it on the salad. Hey Siri, text Alyssa. What to say to Alyssa? I'm recording, I'll call you back. <laughs> hey Siri, text Alyssa. She acting funny. Sending. I'm recording right now. I'll call you back. All right, that's the onion. Now let's go in with our cute. Oh, look at that. We got onion on the knife. Now let's go in with our cucumber. And we're going to do our cucumber like this. My cucumber is never the same size. Do y'all always have nicely cut and proportioned sizes even for your cucumbers? I sure don't. I never do. So we're throwing those cucumbers in. Mm -mm. And that one is too thick. See, that's too, too thick for me to eat on my salad. Let's turn it. And I'm going to bring it over. One piece is already breaking up. But I'm going to bring it so I can show y'all what it's looking like so far. There's the fish. And we're going to let that keep cooking. And now we're going to cut our tomatoes. We're just gonna go ahead and build this salad right now because the drink is not gonna take long at all. And we're gonna just half the tomatoes. Throw them in the salad bowl. And like I said, this is one of those quick, easy meals that you could actually make it at night, put it in a jar or your lunch container if you have to go out for work. And even if you don't go out of the house for work, this is perfect to have ready for when you are, you know, having to get your lunch break at home. And then all we're going to do is cut, girl, uh-uh, that did not just happen. We're going to slowly cut our corn kernels off. I'm trying to get it because this is not the best ear of corn. Um... The other side is not the greatest. So, whoops. Yeah. I think this is all we're going to get off of this ear. Oh, no, that's the bad part. It's not bad. There's, it's just that the kernels don't look too appetizing. They look kind of dried out. Can y'all see that? All right. So, that's all of our corn. And we're going to take it and just drop it in. And then we're gonna shake it up. That's the salad. And you put gorgonzola cheese on it, but I'm not gonna put gorgonzola on it until it goes in the bowl. Because I'm probably not gonna eat all of this salad tonight. But what I'm gonna do right now is put my fancy top on and mix the salad. And I know that this container is super expensive, but just girl, just go get one. Cause it'll make it so much easier for you. 
So that's the salad all mixed up. There it is. And it's gonna, it's gonna be really pretty when I put it on my plate. Let's check this fish again. We're gonna clean up our mess and then we're gonna come back to build our salad, make our cocktail, and then we're gonna end for the evening. All right, so we are back. We're gonna build our salad. I hope you guys can actually, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in some. All right, I zoomed in some so that I can build the salad right here so that it's a little bit closer. Um, I should drop the can. We're not going through all that time, you just focus. We're gonna build the salad first and then we'll zoom back out so that we can build, make our cocktail. So this is what the fish looks like. I did taste it. I feel like I need some Old Bay on it. But since I'm trying to, since it's, there's salt in the dressing, salt in the salad, salt on the fish, I'm not gonna add any more salt. So we're gonna build our salad now. This is not gonna be the prettiest presentation. And I know presentation is very important, but listen. So I hope y'all like it. I'm sorry if it's ugly to some people. <laughs> That's actually gonna be enough salad for me to have tonight. And then I will add a little more of the mixed greens and tomatoes to it when I get ready to have it for lunch tomorrow. Cause I'm gonna have this for lunch tomorrow. All right, so now let's add some of the fish. We're gonna just add it here. I was gonna crumble it up, but I just changed my mind. I wanna be able to crumble it up on my salad. Mm, mm, okay. Okay, wait a minute. Mm-mm, you don't need no more seasoning. Oh gosh, that's good. Oh, yeah. Gorgonzola cheese stinks to me, but it tastes so good. Let's eat a little piece. Not quite blue cheese, but to me it's creamier. So we're gonna just shrink. Sh <laughs> Girl, I say a shrinkle. I need to go to bed, okay? We're gonna sprinkle, so, and you don't have to use cheese at all. And if you want something other than gorgonzola, I would suggest a smoked Gouda um, or a feta. You could even use um, an aged cheddar. That would be good. I think that's gonna be enough cheese. And we're gonna drizzle some of our homemade dressing. Yes, I can't wait. And this drink is so, it's like light and summery. So that's gonna go perfect. I'm gonna sleep really good tonight. All right. And there you have it. There you have it. Instead of steak gorgonzola, we have flounder gorgonzola. All right, there is our salad. Wanna make sure you get some of everything on your fork if possible. Mm. So fresh, so good. Mm, 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 mm. Mm hmm that is delicious. Okay, Tanya. You did that, girl. You did that, girl. All right, we're back. We're all cleaned up. We're going to take a little bite of our salad. And then we're going to make our mocktail. We're going to make the mocktail first. That way, the shaker will be nice and clean. And I won't have to wash it lazy before I make, you know, if I make the mocktail first, I'm good instead of making the cocktail. Mmm. Okay. Half ounce of simple syrup. Two sprigs of thyme. That's like a half, so we're gonna go in with that. And an orange, which should have been peeled already, but can't do everything, right? Not all at once. We be trying, we be trying. And we're actually gonna muddle all of this. We're gonna muddle the orange, the whole orange, except for a slice, because I wanna taste it to see if the orange is sweet. Mm, not too sweet, but we're gonna put the orange in there. We're going with juice from half of lemon. Then we're gonna muddle. 
this is why I really need to get my setup together so I can have an overhead camera that will see down inside of my shaker of what I'm doing. But I'm just muddling and that's going to open up the flavors of the the um, orange, the thyme, the lemon juice, and the simple syrup. You want to muddle it until you don't see the shape of the oranges. Like you don't want them to still be whole. I don't know if y'all can see that. Can you see that without me making a mess? I hope so. All right. Then you're going to put some ice in it. I hope my ice has not completely melted. It hasn't. Good. Almost though. Because it's been out here for a minute. We're going to go ahead with all of that ice. We're going to top it off. Shake it real good till, it's, till your shaker starts to froth. Then you're going to add. You could go in with a couple of cubes of ice. I can't believe I had this ice sitting out this long. And then you're going to pour your drink in. And then you're going to top it with. Ooh, you could actually use a flavored water, flavored sparkling water if you want. But we're just going to go in with some club soda. And cheers. Let's taste it. Oh, it's so fresh. You can taste the thyme. You can taste the orange. You got that lemon. Oh, and the simple syrup. It's all good. Oh, that's so good. Okay. We're going to dump that. And you're going to add the rest of your thyme. You're going to add the juice, the other half of the lemon. And since it's late, I'm only going to go in with one ounce of gin. The recipe actually calls for two, but we're not doing that. We ain't got nothing to prove. Nothing to prove. It's so pretty, the, the color. Let's move that a little closer to the camera. Put the orange in. We're going to go in with half ounce of simple syrup. You know what? I'm going to go in with an ounce of simple syrup just because it's late and I want to cut some of that gin. Because you know gin is strong. All right. And, oops, I didn't mean to put my, um, my jigger in the sink. We got to get an ounce of gin. All right. That's one ounce of gin. And muddle. You can smell all of this. I mean, all of it. You can smell the lemon. You can smell the orange. You can smell the gin. Woo! And the thyme. It's like all of that stuff is waking up. Y'all, guess what I saw in the store today? I did not know they still sold. Sanka. Sanka coffee. I remember my granddad used to drink Sanka. I didn't even know they still made that. All right. That orange is still acting like she's trying to show out. Well, nope. All right. And let's get some ice. All this water. Water. This is melting. Melting. I'm melting. We're just going to go ahead and put all of this ice in here. Shake it up. Top it off with some club soda. Clementine is what it's called, but y'all know this is not a Clementine. This is a Mandarin. Girl, what? Oh my God. It's not strong at all. Baby, listen. The gin and the time, oh my gosh, they go so well together. Mm. Okay, let me get myself together. I'm back together, I'm back. We have a Clementine, we're just gonna call this a Mandarin. Mandarin and thyme mocktail, Mandarin and thyme cocktail. The cocktail has the gin, of course that does it. They both have club soda, simple syrup, one whole mandarin orange, two sprigs of thyme, some ice, 
perfection we have a gorgonzola um fish gorgonzola instead of steak gorgonzola everything is so good i hope y'all enjoyed episode three just episode three right of cooking with cocktails i am t i hope you have a wonderful evening if you make the salad let me know because we're on the way to high school skinny from my kitchen to yours my heart to yours see y'all next week Mm, 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 mm. Love, peace, and blessings. <laughs>